Zero DTE options are very popular with traders lately. Due to the extremely fast, huge returns Zero DTE options can offer, it's no wonder traders are drawn to them. Truth be told, one of my biggest trading days was on a Zero DTE play, generating over a 500% return. My biggest loss, however, was also on a Zero DTE trade. There is never risk-free money in the world of trading, and everything comes at a cost. So let's take a look at the good, the bad, and the ugly of Zero DTE. We'll discuss what Zero DTE options are, the risk and reward of trading them, and how to keep yourself safe in this highly volatile landscape. So first things first, what are Zero DTE options? Zero DTE options are extremely short-term option contracts. DTE stands for days to expiration, and zero means they expire the same day. Putting this together, we get zero days to expiration or zero DTE. So why are they so popular? Traders love them because they are cheap. When we look at option contracts, the further out in time we go, the more expensive they become. This is because the further from expiration, the more extrinsic value a contract will hold. As we get closer to expiration, the contracts cost less and less. Therefore, zero DTE is the cheapest of them all. Let's look at the difference between buying SPY calls at its current price with zero days to expiration versus a SPY call contract that is two weeks out and one that is four weeks out. As you'll notice, the SPY contracts further out in time will cost more, while the ones at zero DTE will cost the least. So if you have a small account, it makes sense why you would automatically be drawn to the zero DTE contracts. They're cheap. On top of being cheap, short-term options have much greater price fluctuations in their premium as the stock price moves up and down. In other words, they are extremely sensitive. But just how sensitive? Let's take a look at two separate out-of-the-money contracts to compare. On this day in particular, we had a market news event. When the news came out, SPY was sitting around $465. Had you purchased contracts with a $467 strike price, slightly out of the money, as the market news event was happening, with an expiration date two weeks out in time, they would have cost you around $2 per contract, or $200 each. As SPY moved up on market news, you'll notice these contracts moved to around $5 per contract, which is great. That's a 150% return. But what did the zero DTE contracts look like? When the market news came out, these contracts were trading at around 50 cents per contract, or $50 each. As SPY moved up, these contracts moved to around 350 each. So while the longer term contracts had a 150% return, the zero DTE contracts had a 600% return. So where's the downside? What is so bad about these? Take a look at the SPY equities chart again. Notice that after the strong move up, it made a pullback, as stocks do. Looking at the two-week call options, when the SPY pulled back, which was around here, these contracts pulled back slightly. It was a tolerable pullback. Now look at the zero DTE contracts. When the SPY made a pullback, these dropped nearly 70%. This is due to theta being incredibly high. Remember that theta, or time decay, increases the closer we get to expiration. So if a stock moves against you or sits around in consolidation for too long, your contract premium will change rapidly. So in this example, we see great returns on both contracts because while they started out of the money, they eventually went in the money as SPY moved away from 465 past 467 and higher on the day. But what happens to your contracts if they never go in the money and SPY never gets to the chosen strike price? Using the same day for SPY, let's choose a contract that's even further out of the money. As you'll remember, SPY pushed up on market news and closed the day around 470. Looking at the 471 contracts two weeks out, even though SPY never made it to 471, they still held value at the end of the day. What you'll notice on the zero DTE contracts is that even though they moved up, if you had been waiting for that last push to 471 as the day was coming to a close, they would lose all value and drop quickly back towards zero. This is because they have no intrinsic value and all of their extrinsic value is fading as they get closer and closer to expiration. And this is where traders get stuck. If you struggle to manage your risk and fail to get out of positions quickly, or you become too stubborn and hold for too long, zero DTE will be incredibly hard for you to capitalize on. 
So although zero DTE can offer huge returns, these types of aggressive drops in premium can be account killers. Now that we've seen the risk and reward involved, what are some of the best ways to trade zero DTE? The first best practice is to scale out of the position quickly. Because these contracts are cheap, typically traders are able to purchase more than they may be able to with higher priced contracts. This allows flexibility to partial and take profit on part of the position while moving a stop loss to break even. For those of you that love the big gains, you can consider scaling out to protect profits, moving your stop to break even, and holding on to a few remaining contracts for those big moves. If you are a trader that has a go big or go home mentality and you struggle to get out of positions before they have made fortunes, my biggest piece of advice to you is to only risk the amount of capital you are willing to lose. Meaning if your risk per trade is $100 and each contract on a zero DTE trade is $10, then buying 10 contracts or in other words, spending $100 on premium for the trade should be your max position size. This means if you do not scale out of the position and theta decay works against you, causing the contracts to go to zero, you will not lose more than you can handle. Some of the biggest losses with zero DTE are when traders get too heavy into a position and refuse to scale out because they know the returns can be massive. But when those returns don't happen and the trade doesn't work out as planned, there is no time left for the contracts to turn around before they expire, in turn causing account blowups. So if you choose to trade zero DTE, it is important that you understand the volatility, the risk involved and how they move. You need to be quick on your feet and manage your risk appropriately. As we saw, this type of trading can offer enormous returns, but it can also ruin your account. So if you trade zero DTE, drop us a comment and tell us how you manage risk while benefiting from the volatility.